Hello again everyone. Today we're going to take a look at the Crescent Nebula. I spent the last few months trying to get this guy together, uh, fighting cloudy nights after cloudy nights and rainstorms and other events around here in Southwest PA. Uh, but now the Crescent Nebula is ready for action. It's located in the Cygnus constellation. It's about 5,000 light years from Earth. It's 25 light years across, and it comes out in the imaging pretty startling and pretty, uh, pretty awesome. The, uh, the nebula was created from the stellar wind from a central hot star. It's made up of mostly the reddish color you'll see in the image, hydrogen alpha, and oxygen 3, O3, and the bluish green tint throughout. The dark spot in the center is actually a single dense cloud of cold dust. And today I'll show you 22 hours at f7 with the Edge 11 telescope and also 8 hours of data that I gathered at the wider f2. I'm Mark Murin and all this is coming up next on Astronomically Speaking. <laughs> Here's a look at the Crescent Nebula, NGC 6888. Chin Nebula in the constellation of Cygnus. This is about 5,000 light years from Earth. And on the right is from the other night when I was using the L-Pro filter. Tons of stars come in when you use the L-Pro, so you get less nebulosity. And this left image is not star corrected, color corrected. The right one is using AstroPixel. I will use uh, I will use Pix Insight in the final renditions, of course. But uh, just quick tests that told me to switch filters to the L Enhance. And let's just go right to where it's at in the sky for me. It's uh, lights from the shopping center are over here. It's up here, back and left, in the constellation of Cygnus, right there. And if we put on the F7 simulator, uh, that's what we end up with. That's the uh, ASI 294 MC Pro field of view. And it's a magnitude of around 7.4, which is pretty bright. And I'm doing 180 second exposures on this. And here is this evening. So far this evening, guiding has been pretty good. It was worse the last two nights, around 0.68 on average. So not that great. And the goal is to get around 0.49 or 0.5 if possible. And I'm using multi-star guiding in uh, PhD to right now with one and a half second exposures between I may try to increase that to two to see if I can bring down that number earlier though uh, the guiding was it must have been better seeing it was about 0.4 on average and now it's up to around 0.6 but again last night was much worse 0 0.68 0 0.72 at times I think it was I also redid the polar alignment tonight and got it to within uh, six, I think. Uh, I redid the polar alignment and tonight it's looking a lot better. So there we have it. In the 180 second exposure, I'm getting some HFRs in the mid threes, upper threes. And let's go to the sequence. Usual settings here, 180 seconds. 
and dithering is on every two frames gain is 121 and offset of 30 and this is good all the way up until about 3:50 a.m. and then I automatically have the dome shut using my usual uh, scheduled task batch command and power off things and turn back on the dehumidifier so this is all at f7 on the edge 11 and the l enhance of course will be much more red in nature than would the l pro but the background stars should be a bit muted although i'm still getting in the 900 count range which i was with the l pro as well so we'll, we'll see how this turns out another footnote that this nebula was discovered in 1792 and it is uh, it was formed by a fast stellar wind from the star WR136 colliding and energizing the slower moving wind ejected by the star when it became a red giant around 250,000 years ago to two to 400,000 years ago somewhere in that range 250 to 400,000 years ago actually and when that collision occurred I created two shock waves, one moving outward and one moving inward. The inward one heats the stellar wind to X-ray emitting temperatures. I'm now into July with the Crescent Nebula trying to get more than 15 hours of total time on the target. Uh, tonight is the first clear night I've had in over a week. Uh, we've had a lot of smoke debris in the atmosphere recently and then tons of rain for days on in i have one night and probably another week of rain it looks like so i'm trying to gather as much as possible so far this evening in just a few minutes of actual exposure time uh it's um, tracking and uh, guiding is at 0.33 pretty exceptional now this goes to show that when you look at the charts that say it's going to be poor quality always just try it first because i'm getting decent hfrs in the mid threes and really good guiding right now just to do a comparison between f7 and f2 here is the crescent nebula tonight on the hyperstar at f2 i have the same slider drawer and l enhance and I'm getting 0.73 guiding, which is for, for multi-star kind of what, have I ex what I expected for the 60 millimeter finder scope. Uh, here's a look at the guiding. The average star count of about 1527 in this shot, and an HFR of 315. Conditions are pretty good tonight. I'll do as many hours of this as I can, try to do a comparison, maybe even crop it, and see how they compare. This gives you a much wider field view of the area. And here's a look at the sequence. Tonight, 124 frames at 120 seconds apiece.